to do an example to get the electric field, the total electric field, due to many charges. In this case, there are going to be only two charges. But we're going to do it using this formal rule of getting the electric field. It's kq over r squared r hat qp, where if you have a charge at, over here and you want to get the electric field at point p, r hat qp points from the charge to the point where you want to calculate the electric field. This point has no charge at all, it's just empty space. You have to put the charge with its sign if you want this equation to work out correctly. And you have to get the unit vector correctly pointing from the chart to the point where you want to get the electric field. And RQP is just the distance between the charge and the point. So the, the, the problem has two charges, a positive charge at the origin and a negative charge located at 0.3 meters away from the origin on the x-axis. And uh, the point P is located on the y-axis at a distance of 0.4 meters from the origin. And there's no point, there's no charge at point P. So, and I put this dot here, that doesn't mean there's any charge there. I'm just locating point P and making it clear where it is. So this is a point in empty, empty space. There's no charge there. They gave you the charge Q1, the value of it. They gave you the charge Q2, the value of it. And the required is what's the total electric field at point P. And then they want the magnitude and they want the, ma the angle that it makes with the x-axis. So how do you get the total electric field, the electric field, sorry, due to charge 1 at point P? Remember, if you want to get the total electric field, you're going to get the electric field due to charge 1, and you get the electric field due to charge 2 independently, and then you add them. So first, let's focus on getting the electric field due to charge 1. If you do it the formal way, then the electric field at, at, due to charge 1 at point P is Ke, Q1, with its sign, over R1 squared, the distance between the charge Q1 and point P, times a unit vector that points from charge 1 to point P. And so I can draw it on the drawing like that. It points from charge 1 to point P. Now, what is this unit vector that points from charge 1 to point P? It's a vector with length 1, and it points along the positive y, ax, positive y direction. So what would that be? What that unit vector be? It's just J hat. Write down the quantities in this equation and uh, simplify them a bit and substitute. Q1 is a positive charge, so I'll just write it as plus magnitude of Q1. So I can keep track about the sign of things as I'm going. Ke as it is, R1 squared as it is. R hat 1p, I'll just put it as J hat. So that means that the electric field uh, due to charge 1 at point P is Ke. Magnitude of Q1 over R1 squared in the J hat direction. So it's it's points in the J hat direction Which is what we expect because we know that positive charges the electric field due to positive charges points radially outward from the positive charge So it gives you the correct sign automatically You don't need to put it yourself. It comes out automatically Okay, what about the electric field due to charge 2 at point P? formal rule, the electric field due to charge 2 at point P is Ke Q2 with its sign over R2 squared, the distance between charge 2 and point P, and then squared, and then R hat 2P. R hat 2P is a unit vector that points from charge 2 to point P. Now, what is R hat 2P in this particular case? If you look at this vector, it's a unit vector, it has magnitude 1, and it has a negative x component, it has a positive y component, so I'll put minus for the x component, and I'll put plus for the y component, and then you just resolve the vector, it's a regular, just resolve it like you resolve any vector, the x component is cosine theta, the magnitude times cosine theta, and the magnitude is 1, and the y component is the magnitude times sine theta, so you just get 1 times sine theta. So this is what the unit vector is. It has a negative x component, it has a positive y component, and the magnitude of it is 1. And the charge Q2, you have to put it with its sign. Q2 is a negative charge, so I have to put it as minus magnitude of Q2. So uh, when you put in the quantities, uh, the charge with its sign and the unit vector, you can see that the x component of the electric field is going to be positive. 
because you have minus times minus. And the y component of the electric field will be negative because you have minus times plus. So when you multiply it out, this is what you get. You get the x component of the electric field is positive, the y component of the electric field is negative. And that's exactly what you would predict because if you look at the electric field vector and you put it on, to, on the drawing, it has a positive x component, it has a negative y component, and it points radially inward towards the negative charge, as you expect. So the direction comes automatically. Again, you don't need to put it yourself, it comes automatically because we used the formal formula for the electric field. Okay, so now we have E1 vector and we have E2 vector and we want to get the total electric field at point P. How do you do that? We said the principle of superposition, you add the electric fields, but you add them as vectors. So uh, the, the, uh, you have to add the I components together. This is the I component. There's no I component here. <clears throat> so you have KQ2 over R2 squared cosine theta, that's the I component. And then the J components, you add them. So you get this term here, and then you get this term here. So this is the total electric field then. It has an I component and it has a J component. And this is the electric field vector uh, geometrically, what it looks like. You can see that it's the sum of these two vectors because if you take the E1 vector and you shift it, keeping the direction the same over here, then the resultant vector is this vector plus this vector. So you arrive at that point. So this is the vector that represents the sum. So that's what the electric field is then in, in symbols. Again, you never substitute numbers in the, in the beginning. You always leave it till leave the numbers till the end. Now, if you want cosine theta, you can, if this angle is theta, then this angle is theta. And cosine theta, you can get it from this triangle. It's the adjacent 0.3 over the hypotenuse 0.5. And sine theta is the opposite 0.4 over the hypotenuse 0.5. So you, cosine and sine are easy to get from the, from the figure. And if you substitute then all the numbers that you know for Q and K and the distances, you'll get 1.1 times 10 to the power 5 Newton per coulomb for the X component, and you'll get this number for the Y component. And so as expected, uh, as shown in the drawing, it, the elect total electric field has a positive X component and a positive Y component. And the total electric field vector doesn't point radially inward or outward to any of the charges. It's just that the total electric field doesn't have to. The electric field due to each charge has to point either radially inward or outward, but the total electric field, the sum, it doesn't. It's just a vector at that point that points in a, in a specific direction. So if you substitute the numbers in then, this is what we would call EX, the X component of the total electric field. This is what we would call EY, the Y component of the total electric field. And this is the uh, component vector of the total electric field, EX in the I direction. This is the component vector of the electric field in the Y direction. And so in the problem, what if they ask you to get the angle phi between uh, the electric field, the total electric field, and the x direction. So this angle phi, and remember this angle phi doesn't have anything to do with this angle theta, it's not the same angle. This angle phi is the angle between the total electric field and the x direction. So if we know that um, this vector has an x component ex and a y component ey, geometry, you can see that tan phi is the y component, the opposite, over the adjacent, the x component. So it's EY over EX. And then we know EY, we know EX, we know those numbers. We just found them in the previous slides. So you can substitute and get phi to be 66 degrees. Okay, then they want the magnitude of the electric field, the total electric field. Well, if you have an elect uh, a vector that has an x component and a y component, then the magnitude of the vector is just the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. We know these two values, so you plug them in and you get 2.7 times 10 to the power 5 Newton per coulomb. 